So it turns out that John Woo and Michael Bay came together to make a Grand Theft Auto type game called Sleeping Dogs. That's not true, but you can't blame me for making that distinction. Well, with all the hijack jumps, the roundhouse kicks, the mid-air car explosions, and the slow motion bullet time moves, it's easy to see why I might think that. But the truth is that Sleeping Dogs was originally supposed to be part of the true crime franchise, but was cancelled. Square Enix swooped in, bought the IP, and then made this little beauty under the new name. Sleeping Dogs puts you in the very capable kung fu kicking shoes of Wei Shen and then throws you in the robust city of Hong Kong. Wei Shen is an undercover cop attempting to infiltrate China's most powerful organized crime syndicate, the Sun An Yi. So it goes without saying that Wei Shen is in an extremely dangerous position, both mentally and physically. You must be a very dangerous man, Wei Shen. That is exactly what we want people to think. During Wei Shen's journey, he'll meet some interesting characters along the way, and he'll have some ups and downs. But Wei's endeavor is constantly a struggle of morality that blurs the line between what is right and wrong, justice or vengeance. You want the chairman? I report to him now. You want the Red Poles? I'm one of them. That's what worries me, Wei. You're one of them. Not everything is so black and white in Hong Kong. And Hong Kong itself is one of the most interesting characters of Sleeping Dogs. It's bright and lively with a lot to do while simultaneously looking fantastic. Although, in one extreme, it does have some very cheap-looking storefronts at times. But on the other extreme, the brilliant light show from the refractions of neon signs off the wet pavement while racing down the city street is mesmerizing. But Hong Kong isn't just skin deep. There's street racing, cockfights, side missions, fight clubs, wardrobes, collectibles, and much more. Man, there's a lot to do here. And this is all in between the branching story quests that will take you through some fantastic cinematics and fun scripted events. Like high speed car jumping, hostage situations, stakeouts, and crazy car chases to name a few. Upon completion of these various story quests, Wei will be able to increase his rank in either cop or triad experience. These increased levels will unlock perks like cheaper prices, special disarm abilities, or even unique attacks for combat. Which is great because combat is definitely one of Sleeping Dog's strongest aspects. The melee combat is visceral and raw. In melee, Wei fights very similar to Batman from Arkham City. He can attack directionally with various punch and kick combos while also utilizing grappling attacks and timed counters for devastating effects. Also, while grappling with an enemy, different environmental hazards will highlight in red to indicate a place to execute your combatant. Yep, the combat is ruthless, and I love it. And it's a good thing too, because on the other side of the spectrum is the gunplay, which isn't that great. There are some pretty nifty slow motion moves like hurtling over cover or diving from a car, but overall it's pretty subpar. The aiming reticle lacks finesse, the physics seem spotty, and the cover to cover mechanics are clunky. Now when you're not beating the crap out of a group of enemies or shooting them full of lead, then you're making your escape in some fashion. And to flee, Sleeping Dogs has a pretty interesting avenue to pursue. Wei can travel on foot with some parkour-esque free-running, or there's always the option to jump into one of the game's many cars to make use of the active ramming ability. Really, it's just quite interesting and entertaining to use your car as a weapon. Any game where you can listen to the Who or Queen while doing donuts around your enemy is pretty awesome in my book. Sleeping Dogs tries to have all these things, the amazing combat of Batman, the intuitive free-running of Assassin's Creed, and the gunplay of Uncharted or Gears, but it falls short of the excellence those titles bring to those gameplay aspects. That shouldn't imply though that Sleeping Dogs is bad at any of them though, it's just not best in class. This makes Sleeping Dogs feel like it's a bit of jack of all trades, master of none, which is basically true, but when you add up the sum of all its parts, Sleeping Dogs is more along the lines of feeling like a jack of all trades, master of fun. 